Hello! Uh, this is going to be kind of an adventure this time. You know, uh, it's it's pretty late on a Friday night right now. It's raining outside, so there's no stargazing going on, but there is going to be an adventure tomorrow. Uh, you know, over the past few years, the light pollution here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area has gotten really bad. Uh, if you're familiar with light pollution scale, it goes from 1 to 9. and 9 is basically New York City, where you're lucky if you can see the moon, and 1 is basically out in the middle of the ocean. There are parts of Texas, uh, there's actually in Big Bend, that supposedly is a class one, darkest you can get. But around here in Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, it's around the city, it's basically sevens and eights. In fact, in our little suburb, it's eight. So when I go outside and look up, I'm lucky if I can see maybe 15 to 25 stars, something like that. So we've been getting these flyers for a year or two now. Everybody around here has been getting them. Basically, ranchers uh, west of town are selling off their land. They're cutting them into plots, uh, little plots, like a one acre. Uh, I guess there's some 20 acre plots, but those are pretty expensive. Uh, fortunately, there they're loans, uh, land loans, basically, where you can get uh, borrow the money to buy the land. So tomorrow, we are going to look at uh, a lot. Uh, it's their minimum. It's uh, basically, it's, it's two acres of basically dirt out in the middle of nowhere, but it has class three light pollution. So the skies look pretty amazing. That's what I've been told. And even on the light pollution map, it says it's a class three. So I don't think they're pulling my leg on that one. So uh, I have no idea really what it's like to uh, purchase land. I'm not a really a, a land owner. I'm not a land baron, I guess is what they would say. But it would be pretty cool to have a place to go camp, take the telescope, uh, you know, take the family there. And um, maybe someday uh, when I retire from my day job, maybe build a uh, retirement yurt or something like that but anyways it should be an adventure tomorrow and for those of you that are interested in those flyers that keep coming in the mail uh, I will share as much information as I have and I hope it's not really one of those high pressure sales situations um, those aren't as fun uh, they can be you know depending on if you ask the right questions but uh, anyways hopefully it's educational in some way all right, should be fun tomorrow. Wish us luck. Oh, there's one more thing. You know, we just got the email that tells us where this land is. They won't tell you the location until the night before your appointment to go see the land. Now, normally in almost every business transaction on the planet, if anybody did that, you should run away screaming. It's a red flag. But apparently the, the demand for the land is so hot right now that um, they try to keep the specific location secret until uh, the night before. I guess that keeps you from driving out there to get an early glimpse of the property, maybe? Anyways, we know where it's at, uh, and we're going to be heading that way. Uh, according to uh, Google Maps, it's going to take somewhere between one hour and two hours to get there, and it should be educational. Uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, cost anything, but time. We'll see. Uh, I just got back, actually, and boy, was it educational. It was strange, bizarre, impressive, and educational, uh, all mixed into one. There were a few things I didn't know. For example, it's basically a one-day land sale. Uh, what they've done is they've taken a ranch, and this is happening all over Texas. They've taken a ranch, and they've essentially... Uh, cut it up into a neighborhood, complete with roads, there's even cul-de-sacs, and there's little plots of land, just like looking at any other brand new neighborhood development. The difference is that there's little plots of land, instead of being 0 0.2 acres like they are here in town, they're actually 2 acres, 4 acres, uh, 13 acres, 14 acres, they're, they're sizable. So they've already had a lot of equipment in there, and so the, the roads are already there, uh, perfectly flat, uh, just, just need paved. And they basically run all the utilities up to each plot of land. So you, you're only responsible with getting it from the edge of your property to wherever you build a house, if you build a house. One of the interesting things they told me is that basically a lot of people buy the land and don't do anything with it. They, they use it for camping, actually. Um, I, I found that fascinating because that's probably what we would do is we would use it for camping until possibly um, after I retire. But anyways, uh, when I got there... Uh, essentially, uh, there was a group of about 40 cars. It's a mixture of salesmen and, and potential customers. 
and they assign you to a, a agent, basically a real estate agent. And the real estate agent has a map and they have basically a list of all the plot numbers, the acreage and the prices. And they drive you around. They ask you, do you want woods? Do you want water features? What kind of things do you want? Do you want to just clear cut? What kind of thing? Because this is a ranch. It's an old ranch. So there's a whole bunch of varied terrain. Um, so you get in the car and you drive around. Uh, I was looking for something that had woods, basically, and um, a, a place where you could see the stars. Because basically one of the primary drivers of this is to have a place that possible retirement location, but also doubled as a great place for stargazing, right? Uh, and I looked it up on the light pollution map, and it's a border level three, so the skies are pretty amazing there by, by any standards. Right here, again, it's a border level eight, so I can't see anything, almost anything here in town. So that was very inviting. Now, I will say uh, it was all advertised as it was an end of year special, and they had uh, about one lot for a very low price, and when I got there, they had only had one lot that was at that price. Everything else was way, way, way higher. Uh, okay, so you drive around and you list all the properties. They show you these properties, the ones you like, and you have to put down a down payment on them. Uh, but you have to do it right then and right there. And that's fair. It's just, it was, it was 10%, which I think is standard across all these rant sales that they're doing. And there were a lot of very promising you know locations and it is you know it's like when you go hunting for houses you have you have the target price you're looking for and then they show you the the, the higher price ones and of course you're always wowed by the expensive ones because you know, they have bigger trees and and uh <laughs> it's just prettier landscape and there is this one plot uh it was imagine you have this nice big hill and it was a completely wooded hill except for this little clearing on top that would have been perfect for a campsite or a cabin, or a house, or retirement home. Uh, you could see for probably 10 to 15 miles in every direction. It was absolutely stunningly beautiful, and it would have been perfect for stargazing um, with that Bortle 3 light pollution. It would have been really neat. Uh, but, you know, in the end, um, I could I could tell, obviously, that it, they it's a one-day sale, and so, as and I will say, it's, it's generally... It's high pressure without the high pressure, if that makes any sense, because they don't need high pressure because it will all be sold that day. I have reason to believe with other interaction that I once had um, that they aren't kidding. These properties will be sold probably by the end of the weekend. So there is the opportunity cost of not buying that day. But then again, there's a lot more land for sale in Texas. I would want to, I, I did want to share I, I love um, sales techniques. I find them fascinating. And I find them fascinating because a lot of times they actually work. <laughs> I wanted to share one just in case you, you happen to do this. So you have the price sheet. It has the, the plot numbers. Let's say there's one number one through 100, 100 different plots. And it has the acreage and it has the price. And each vehicle that had a customer in it, we're all driving around. At some points, we're literally driving around each other. And at one, one point... Um, and then, oh, about every five to ten minutes, one of the salesmen would say over the walkie-talkie, they would say, hey, you know, I'm, uh, I'm you know, on the southeast corner of the, of the ranch. Can you go through the list of properties that have sold already? And somebody would go through, and uh, they would list all the plot numbers. And, and the real estate agent would, you know, point out on your sheet, you know, oh, they just strike a line through that one. Oh, that one just got sold. Oh, that one just got sold. And it was, uh, it was a very obvious sales technique. Uh, but I found it so impressive <laughs> because I can't imagine it actually works. Uh, <laughs> but I thought that was really kind of cool. Um, but I will say in the end, I, I didn't buy, uh, you know, as again, that's, there's the opportunity cost. Uh, I will say this, and I have, I have to give them credit. The real estate agent that I was working with, the person that was driving me around, super professional and very knowledgeable. Uh, I had all these questions, uh, you know, utilities, can you have a camper on there while you're building? Uh, can you go camping on your property? Uh, more questions about utilities and the, the salesperson, they had answers for everything. They knew everything. Uh, they were very knowledgeable. So I have, to, I have to give them credit for that. And as I mentioned, it wasn't very high pressure sales. I was expecting the car sales when uh, high pressure technique, it just wasn't there. Uh, despite having all these salespeople there, they were they were somewhat relaxed about it, and I think it's because they knew that you know in the end by the end of the day, um, 
they would be sold. So if you get these flyers in the mail and uh, you are curious about it, hopefully my experience will uh, give you some education about what to expect. It's a big deal. There's a lot of people involved on the day that you go. And um, anyways, I wanted to share that with you. So I guess I'm stuck with my Bortle 8 to light pollution for a while, but I'm okay with that. Um, I guess I, I don't have to take on a new mortgage payment <laughs> for the land. All right. Hope this was helpful and uh, clear skies, everybody.